Hey everybody, I'm back for another Talk Tuesday where I do my makeup while I chat with you guys about life. I just got out of the shower, so my hair is currently air drying. And yeah, I'm just gonna get started on my makeup. I think I'm gonna use a combination of my favorite foundation and my favorite BB cream because I just like the way, I don't know, I feel like the BB cream makes the foundation more moisturizing and not as full coverage and then it kind of makes the foundation last longer, so that's always a win. So I'm gonna get this going first. All right, so I just put on a really light layer. My skin is so dry right now. It is not like my skin at all. I think I'll put on more concealer though, but my Sephora one is like pretty much gone, like almost gone. I'm just gonna save it for special occasions, but it is my birthday month. I'm using the Adria wine in case you're wondering. So I will be going to Sephora at some point just to get my birthday free gift thing. So I will definitely pick up another one of those concealers. I don't think it was too expensive. I don't remember, maybe around the 15 mark it was definitely worth it though but yeah I figure I would just update you guys on everything that's going on in life I mentioned if you watch the day in life video on my main channel that I had my audio appointment this week and that lots happened last weekend and I didn't really get into it but I figure I don't know I figure I'll get into it on this channel it's one of those things like I feel like since this channel is smaller that I'm more connected to you guys, whereas the other channel is a lot larger and I don't have such a good handle over the audience. I don't know if that makes sense. And I don't know if a lot of you are here just for beauty stuff, so you really don't care about my life updates, but I feel like I'm more comfortable talking about life updates on this channel because you guys have come to know that's what to expect with these Talk Tuesdays. So I figure, yeah, smaller audience, I'll just kind of get into everything that's going on. All right, where to begin? There are a lot of topics. Um, well, I guess I'll start off by saying that my husband has been home for the past month helping me out since I can't drive or take care of the children. And we thought he was going to get stress leave, like we were waiting for his claim to go through because his work made it sound like that's just what happens in these situations. And unfortunately it wasn't approved because we didn't realize, I guess we could have looked into it more too, but stress leave you need medical medical information that the person claiming the stress leave has the medical issue, but it's me with the medical issue, and he's the employee, if that makes sense. So that was a big shock, because I mean, he hasn't been paid for last month at all, and he has to go back to work, because obviously we can't afford for him to be home, and for myself to be home. So it just kind of, it happened last Friday, and we're kind of scrambling to figure out, because I still, can't watch the kids by myself all day, I can't drive, so yeah, I guess that's the first big stressor. Like I was saying in my day in the life video, I had my audiology appointment on Wednesday. So to diagnose whatever the heck is going on, they need to send me through the hearing test, which is audiology, and a balance test, which is where they put you in a box that moves apparently, and they put hot and cold water in your ears to stir up your inner ear to induce the vertigo. So they're trying to make me sick essentially. This is happening February 17th. That's the second part of the test, the day before my birthday. Of course, because lovely things like to happen around my birthday, but you know what? I gotta go through it because I need to figure out what's going on. My audiology appointment went fine. I have great hearing. I didn't think that was the issue, but they needed to reel that out. And the girl who did that testing is also doing the balance testing. And you know what? She was awesome. I wish she had been the specialist because he was just useless, like no bedside manner, didn't explain anything, didn't really do anything. She sat me down, made me feel like this is this is a thing, like they're gonna help me, even if these tests come out clear, they're gonna keep looking for answers, I'm not alone, um, they're here to help, like just explaining everything. So that was really nice, I was really reassured to have that appointment. But in the meantime, we did have to try and figure out a plan to I just get through. I guess just get through the days with Harrison at work and me not being able to drive. Um, he's currently on a. He's like working from home when he's gradually going back, and we have made the decision to hire a nanny, which I have mixed feelings about. Obviously, I'd like to be able to take care of my kids by myself right now, um, but we were debating the idea of getting some part-time help anyways once. I was better because I do a lot of work here at home and I could use the extra help. I just wasn't wanting to do it now and I wasn't wanting to do it because of my health issues. But really, 
you, you got to do what you got to do like that that's our option so we've hired someone two days a week they she's a really really nice girl we love her um, she's coming in on Tuesdays and Thursdays to just help me with Cassidy help me with Riley Kayla's at school so she won't be home and then my husband always works from home on Wednesdays so those three days are now covered and I don't know I don't know how I feel about it I don't even know how I feel telling you guys about it because I just don't like to be in this situation. Um, but weighing out all the options and like the safety of my kids and just being able to get through daily life and get them around because I can't. Like I'm good for a few hours but when I get tired I go down hard or the symptoms come on really fast. So for the meantime this was the best decision. So yeah that's another thing that's going on. Alright, I think I'm going to play around with my Makeup Geek eyeshadows because I love them so much. I just put the baby down for a nap. I'm going to try and not talk too quietly because I know you guys have a hard time hearing me when I talk too quiet. Um, but if I am quieter, that is why. So, another thing that happened this weekend that really set me back. As you guys know, I've been driving a little bit here and there if you follow me on Instagram. Been driving short distances, Starbucks, um, appointments that aren't too far away, things like that. And for about two weeks there, I was pretty good. Like, I felt, I did feel my vestibular symptoms, and I definitely couldn't drive too far. But when I was driving, I felt confident enough to be on the road, or I wouldn't have put myself on the road. So, I want to throw that out there first of all. Um, anyway, so, this past weekend... Well, I guess it was two weekends ago by the time this was uploaded. But my girlfriend and I, who I haven't seen in a long time, we made plans. We actually made plans back when my vertigo was really bad and we had to cancel them twice because I wasn't getting better. So this was round three and I finally wanted to do it. I felt well enough to do it. Um, and it's downtown, which is about an hour away from us, give or take. And she's in a different city. So I basically said that I could drive a pretty short distance meet her and then she could pick me up and drive me the rest of the way downtown so that she didn't have to backtrack and I felt totally confident about that. The issue with this is that there's a very large bridge between like right before where I was going to meet her which I've never had issues with bridges like ever. Let's just put that out there. I don't I don't have issues with bridges. <sighs> Anyways this day I started driving it was really rainy and I think that kind of this made me not feel super confident right off the bat, so I should have taken that as a sign. But I was doing fine driving, and then I got on the highway, and I was like, you're fine, just stay in the slow lane, you know, keep up with the pace of traffic. And it was literally right after the bridge that I was meeting her anyways. As soon as I hit the bridge deck as I was heading down, something in my head, and if you deal with anxiety, you know what I'm talking about, your brain kind of takes over, no matter how rational you are, something in you takes over, just started telling me that, like, what if you have, because I've been dealing with anxiety really bad, a panic attack on the bridge, like, what if, what if your symptoms act up, you can't pull over on a bridge, is basically what went through my head. Now, I haven't dealt with actual anxiety attacks or panic attacks since university, been almost 10 years. I deal with kind of anxiety symptoms throughout pregnancy and whatnot, but never a legit panic attack since I was in university. I have a hard time even talking about this, but let's make it a short version, I guess. So I went down the bridge deck and this wave came over me so intense, worst panic attack I've ever had. My heart was literally beating out of my chest. I could not breathe. My body went numb. It started affecting my vision. I was I had rolled down the window, I was trying to sing to the radio, I was trying to snap myself out of it, I was trying to shake my head and focus, I was trying to calm myself down, I was trying to talk to myself. It was, it was really, 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 really scary and obviously I had nowhere to pull over so, I mean the bridge wasn't too, too long. By the time I got like halfway I was like, you're almost there, you're almost there, you're almost there. I was talking to myself, my body was going numb, it was scary as heck. I got over the bridge and then I, I was the first exit anyways. When you get off the exit, you have to stop and yield to oncoming traffic. So I was behind a line of cars and I started to calm down. I thought I was okay waiting in this line. And then just as I got, it was my turn to look, I couldn't pull over at this point anyways. My body like, it was so exhausted and shaken up that I literally turned my head like this. Like that's how my body moved when I was trying to move. And it 
it just made everything worse so I got off pulled over basically shut the car off like pulled over in a parking spot shut the car off put my seat back and basically passed out um, I mean it wasn't for long but my body was so exhausted and I guess overworked I don't know it just I straight up passed out woke up called my husband told him what was going on obviously he was worried for me and told me to sit still and called my friend she's like where are you she's supposed to be meeting me and I couldn't even open my eyes like the vertigo symptoms came really like a lot back I couldn't open my eyes to even tell her like where I was parked <sighs> she ended up finding me I couldn't she couldn't find a parking spot so she's like just get in my car I couldn't even sit up let alone get in her car so she got finally found a parking spot she got in my car I just sat there and cried so that's a lovely fun story so needless to say I am no longer driving and um, I just hate that that had to happen like obviously I'm glad everything's okay but I just feel like that set me back so far because if you know anything about anxiety like the farther away, like the longer you haven't had it, the better you are. So to have something so fresh, I feel like I'm going to be screwed driving over any bridge from now on. Even though I don't have an issue with bridges. It's just the fact that I knew I couldn't pull over. So I just feel like, I feel like I had PTSD from it. It was really traumatic. Happy everything's okay. The kids weren't with me in the car, don't worry. Um, and I'm not driving anymore. So yeah, sorry for the downer video, but I know some of you guys like these updates and it's it's life, it's what's going on. Um, I'm trying to remain positive despite everything. Um, things could be a lot worse and I'm just happy everything's okay. And we have a plan, not the best plan, but we do have a plan. And um, whenever I am cleared or I feel confident to start driving again, I will definitely have people with me. I just hope that this anxiety doesn't stick with me because since that happened, Every single day, my anxiety everywhere has been bad. I had to go get blood work, my husband dropped me off, and then when I'm back to get Kayla from school, I almost lost it just sitting there, just being around people. So it just stinks that I'm dealing with this vestibular disorder and now my anxiety has come back. So now I'm literally dealing with two things and they play off each other and it's evil. So pretty. But yeah, like I said, I'm just trying to stay positive. Um, my natural path has given me stuff for anxiety. My counselor is doing meditation. That's another thing. I should talk about that next week. Meditation is awesome. I've never actually looked, like done legit meditation before, um, but I've been doing it with her and she's given me stuff to do at home and it's really helped me. If you like doing meditation, let me know. Like, Let me know which ones you like doing and anything I should know about it because it's been awesome. All right. I think I am done. So again guys, I'm sorry for the somewhat downer video. I hope you know that I always try and just keep it real and I am, I am staying positive and everything happens for a reason and I truly believe in that and everything is going to go the way it's supposed to go and this is just kind of where we are in life. If you deal with anxiety though and you know things that have helped you with anxiety, I would love to know because I know I'm not alone. I know a lot of people struggle with anxiety so yeah, I guess I just want to let you guys know that you're not alone either. But thank you so much for watching my Talk Tuesday, and I will see you next week. Bye!